Hello everyone and welcome back to the Math Lab. My name is Jason Gregerson and in this module we're going to look at using the command manipulate. Specifically we're going to look at the basic structure of the command, then we'll look at some other examples, and lastly we'll show you some really neat advanced features that you can really run with if you're interested. As always you should have a notebook open and be following along trying the commands um, as I run through them. Uh, pause the video as needed and review as needed. Alright, let's take a look at basics. Alright, so the general form of the manipulate command has this structure. It has two arguments to the command. The first one is the expression, the thing that you want to manipulate, and the second one is the parameter and range of values for the parameter. So for instance, if I took three times some number, like two, I could run that and get a value of six. But what if I wanted to explore what happens when I multiply a number by three? Well, I could just change that value from two to three to four to five to five point four, and so on and so forth. But obviously, that's a really tedious exercise. What I really want to do is explore three times some number. So this is the expression I would like to manipulate. So I will put manipulate in front of that expression. My first argument will be this expression. And then my second argument will be the parameter and a range of values. Let's plug in values that start at a equals 1 and go to a equals 8, for instance. And this will be the basic structure of manipulate. And so when I run this command, I'm going to generate a slider that I can just I can slide along here. And as I slide that, it's changing the value of a. And the output that's presented here is the product 3 times a. All right, so we have some neat uh, features of the slider. I got a little plus symbol over here that I can click, and it's going to give me some buttons. One, it's going to show me the specific a value that's generating the specific value of 3 times a. I can also kind of tick through different values here, or I can also hit the play button and really animate this whole process. So with this one short command, I can generate a slider that's manipulating an expression. So this is the basic structure of the command, but there's lots of different ways I can manipulate this to have more control. For instance, right now I can see that as I slide, it's really changing that value of a by just a little tiny bit. But it could be the case that I want to set how much I'm changing that value of a by. I can do that by adding a optional step size after my, my final parameter value. So for instance, this would say take values of a that, go f that start at 1 and go to 8 using a step size of 1. And if I were to run that cell, now as I slide my value, it's really using discrete values for A instead of those um, more continuous ones. All right, what else can I change? Well, I can also give some information about the starting value of A. So for instance, my parameter is A, but if I wrap some curly brackets around that, I can provide a list of information about A specifically. For instance, I could say that even though I'm going from 1 to 8, at step size of 1, I might want to fix a starting position for a. I might want to start at a value of a equals 5, for instance. I also might want to give my, my parameter a name that's meaningful. And I can do that by adding another comma and having another component to my list, right? Give the value a name, uh, but I have to use quotation marks when I put in that name. So, for instance, my name for this parameter could be multiples of 3. And I'll end my expression with quotation marks. So now when I run that here, I can see that I've named my parameter, and I've also fixed my starting point to be 5. So if I open this dropdown again, I can see I'm starting at a value of 5, even though that's the middle of my, my slider. And then the rest will kind of perform like normal. All right. The last um, secondary um, feature that I can add to this manipulate is I might want to say, well, what happens if I take 3 times a number and then I add some second parameter value to it? Well, now I'd like to generate a second slider that's going to manipulate the second parameter, and it's really easy to do. I have this structure for my first parameter, and all I'm going to do is add a comma and add a second parameter. Let's take b values that go from 1 to 4. And now when I run this, it's going to generate a second slider. So I can see that when a is 5 and b is 1, I have a value of 16. And I can change the values of b, or I can change the values of a. All right, so this is the basic structure of using the command manipulate. Now let's look at some other examples. So in the basic section, we manipulated a command three times some number. But the beauty of uh, this command is we can really use any command in Mathematica as the expression of manipulate. So for instance, in this first cell, I'm using a command called table. What table does is it generates a list of values for me. So here I have an expression 3 times i, 
and it's going to generate a list of outputs as i goes from 1 to 5. So if I were to run this, I would get a list of values as my output. Now, I might want to say here's my list of, of 5 values, but I might want to change the length of my list from 5 to 7, for instance, maybe to 9, and see how that changes my list. But I can also treat this like a parameter and plug this whole expression for table right into the first argument of manipulate. So now this is the thing I'd like to manipulate. So I will use the command manipulate, and that will be my whole first argument. And I'll simply add a comma afterward and say a is the value I'd like to manipulate. And let's take that value to go from 3 to 9 in this case. And now in this specific example, I really want my, my number of elements in my list to be an integer value. So I'm going to say um, use step size 1 in this case. And so when I finish doing that, you can see that now I have a slider that as I change the parameter value, it's giving me a list of different lengths. So my argument for manipulate doesn't have to be just some sort of mathematical calculation. It can actually be something that generates a list or other things. In my next example, I want to play with an image. So first I have to generate this image. So I'm going to use freeform input and say, let's look at the Wolfram Spikey, that's their logo, and let's do uh, an image. And when I run this, it's going to use freeform input to see if it can locate this image. All right, so I've generated the image. Mathematica has lots of different image tools. So one thing I'm going to do here is right before my image, I'm going to use the command rotate. And I'm going to rotate this image by, let's say, how about 20 degrees. And when I do this, it's going to output the image that I started with rotated by 20 degrees. And I could change this value from 20 degrees to 50 degrees and get different rotations. But if I want to explore all kinds of rotations, I could say let's rotate this by some parameter, i or a or whatever we want to call it. And I could wrap a manipulate around this thing as well. So now if I manipulate this expression, and now this whole rotated command here is the first argument of manipulate. And then i is my parameter. Let's rotate at angles starting at 0 and going to 360 in this case. And sure enough, it generates my slider. And I can grab my slider and drag it and really see this rotation done. So once again, manipulate is a very powerful tool that can be applied to lots of different things. One thing we're really going to look at is the plotting of functions. So here I've defined a function f of x, and I've also plotted the function for, uh, over a range of x values, and I've set plot range to really fix my window size. If I evaluate this cell, I get the image I expect. Now if I'm trying to explore this function, I might say, what happens if I take f of 2 times x instead? And I could rerun that, I get a different picture, but now I really want to explore what happens when I consider the transformation where I take some number a and I multiply it by x inside the function argument. Well, what I can do is just use this whole plot command, the entire command, as the argument of manipulate. So now, once again, I'll wrap the command of manipulate around that. I'll use that as my first argument of manipulate. And then the second argument is the parameter values. So I want to say, let's take a to be my parameter, and we'll let it take values from 1 to 5, for instance. And now when I run this, it's going to generate that slider. And now I can really explore what happens in that transformation. And I might want to know, is that different from multiplying on the outside of my function? So like this, well, I can simply modify that command and run it again. And then I can see what happens here, and it really does look different. But even better, it would be if I use another parameter name, create another slider, and I could really compare both of those transformations. And that's a task that you're going to be working with later in this module. All right, one last topic in this module, and that's the advanced features. So we've already seen how powerful the command manipulate is, but we've actually been restricting ourselves to only one controller type. That's the default controller type of slider. Turns out we can change that slider into all kinds of other things. For instance, we could Use an animator, a checkbox, a color slider. We could have an input field or a pop-up menu. All kinds of different options for changing our slider in this man manipulate command. As always, if we want to explore some of those things, we could just use the manipulate command and then hit F1 to enter the help menu. We'd be brought to the help menu. 
And as always, they have a lot of working examples. But if I scroll down, I'll actually see an option for options. And if I expand this, I'll see all the different options I can use with this command. And there are a lot. I'm going to focus on control type. And here it'll show me some specific examples of working with other control types. For instance, I could modify my current slider to be vertical, but I could always do a 2D slider like this. And so now I can really slide in different um, directions and modify two values. I can also do a locator that's just uh, going to go to the position where I click in space. I could also use all kinds of things. I could use a radio button. I could use a setter. I could use a checkbox. I could use a drop down. I could use a color slider that lets me click on different colors and have that as my argument. There's all kinds of different ways I can modify this if I really just wanted to play. Now that's something we're not going to require you to do in the lab, but it is really a neat thing to see that you can really build something pretty advanced by just using this one command. In fact, a lot of people really do make amazing things using these different control types, and you can see a lot of them by going to this website right here. This is the demonstration page on Wolfram Alpha. And so if we follow that link, we'll be brought to this page, and we can scroll down and find amazing demonstrations of using Manipulate in all kinds of different areas. If I just grab one of these first ones here, for instance this one, I'll be brought to this page, and I can really see some incredible object that somebody built here. So I can see that somebody built a manipulate with different sliders that's really making this wonderful thing. And the great thing about demonstrations is if I really want to play with this thing, I can actually download the notebook that it was created and really play with it myself. So all kinds of different ways you can really explore and learn about the manipulate command. All right, that concludes this video on manipulate. Thank you.